This week we're out of the garage engineer shop and we are on a secret location in Athens, Georgia. So I wasn't planning on doing a video since we're going to be doing some work this week. However, uh, I got an email, uh, the new product email from Harbor Freight. And normally I look at it and it's nothing really of interest that I'm interested in getting. However, this week I had something that I've been looking for and I uh, had to get right on it. Now the item that we saw that was interested in is the Hercules Bandsaw Benchtop Stand. And I have seen a few of these um, over time and I've been interested in getting one, but uh, it only did an upright stand. However, this, uh, as we will do the unboxing, can do uh, different positions. Now the reason why I think this is a good product is because it is small enough for small shops or even on the go. Uh, you can take it with you uh, if you're doing a mobile job to cut metal. It says it does wood and plastic. Well, we can test that. Uh, it is, since it is a metal band, it's gonna be a little slower. But uh, the compactness of it is great for small shops and medium shops. If you're going to do this every day, you're definitely going to need a commercial uh, bandsaw. But those take up so much room, if you've seen. I mean, they, they can take up to four square feet of floor space, and they're huge. And that's just for the horizontal bandsaw. But what about a vertical bandsaw? So here it is uh, briefly out of the box. Basically it is a horizontal uh, bandsaw that you'll be able to put your the bandsaw in here and cut this way. But the other cool thing about this is you can set it to make it into a uh, vertical bandsaw and you'll have your cutter here and you can do your cuts. So this is what I think is very unique compared to the uh, other products I've seen in, in the past. Before it used to take your bandsaw and you could mount it into a uh, frame such as this and you would have a um, uh, you would have a vertical bandsaw but which is handy but to be able to turn it into a horizontal bandsaw also and make cuts just like that nice and even and straight uh, that's what really attracted me having a dual and in such a small package so I didn't have a bandsaw uh, I've been looking for a used one a uh, good Milwaukee or DeWalt uh, corded at uh, state sales and haven't been able to find one because I mean, they're very expensive. If you're going to use this every day, then I would go go towards that product. But for our test today, I just got the uh, Bauer, which is a pretty much a knockoff of the Milwaukee and DeWalt uh, bandsaw, and we're going to get that set up, and that's going to be our test uh, saw for our stand. So in my haste uh, purchasing, purchasing this, uh, it was in the rain and it was, had to go do a, another appointment. I assumed it shouldn't, based on the price, it wouldn't have a blade included. I saw in the picture that it did, but of course I didn't read carefully. Blades sold separately. So we'll be able to get this set up. I will need to get a blade uh, to continue our test afterwards. Uh, but yeah, remember, if you're gonna be doing get a new saw, Make sure it has a blade included. All right, for those of you who don't like to read the instructions, uh, sometimes it is useful, and in this case it is because there are different setups to mount the bandsaw in the stand based on which uh, type of unit you have. Uh, and I'll go ahead and go through this just so that you know um, when you're purchasing it that uh, if you're a bandsaw that you have already fits or if you're going to get a new one. Now, I did ask him about the Hercules cord and cordless. I didn't see one at this store location. I probably would have gotten that one, uh, but they didn't have it, so I went with the Bauer. So they cover the Hercules cord and cordless, the Bauer cord and cordless, the Milwaukee, and the DeWalt corded and DeWalt cordless. I guess it's different setups for that. So that I don't know uh, if there's another brand. There might be a few other brands like Makita or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure if this will fit. They don't have the documentation for it, but they do have documentation for those items So that's just something to keep in mind. Those are pretty much the most popular uh, Brands of bandsaw All right, so I found the bracket. They're actually nicely written on there. This says Bauer on it The other one said Hercules and Milwaukee. So that's pretty that's an upgrade. I've never seen that before I think it's laser engraved in there, but that's kind of neat for a low-end low-priced product as this is so let's go ahead we uh, got the bracket so now we need to get the handle off here so I've got a hex head 
Let's see if I got the correct hex head for that. I might not have a big enough one. Nope, that fits. Perfect. So if you want to know, this is my Tool Check Plus. Uh, this was my EDC carry tool bag. I just happened to pick it up on the way out just to have it. I like, I like to travel with it. Uh, there is a video of everything, all the tools that are included in there and uh, how to get it. This is uh, by one of my favorite tools. This is the wearer. It's kind of for smaller projects. Uh, you get metric system sockets. You get all kinds of drill bit heads. And you get a small little socket. So we'll be using that. So what you do. So you get a nice little socket set there. So I hope that's deep enough. We're going to find out. So this is a pretty handy little set to have pretty much has everything you might need it's more on the maintenance or EDC or small carry for every day this this ratchet might be a little too small if, if you were using the needed a ratchet every single day it might be a little too small for the hand but it works perfect for projects like this so now we need to get a smaller ratchet we got to take these upper two bolts off so let's find another one All right, so we got the upper two bolts out. We'll get the bracket here. So now we just take the bracket that says Bauer, the Bauer facing out, and we reuse the screws here. So the funny thing is, is that as I was walking into the store, a gentleman was walking out with this exact same stand and I said, did you get the email too? And he said, yeah, I saw it and had to, had to have it. So uh, I wasn't the only one who had the same ideas of how, how this product would be very interesting. So when I walked into the store, I was able to find the product, talking with the manager. And she said, I said, how many of these did you get in? And she said, we got three. One they used for the display. One, the other gentleman who just walked out the door got, and this was the last one they had that was in the box. So, I would check your stores out. Don't know how much each uh, one will get initially since this is a new product. But you might have to order it online. But the, so far, the finish and fit of everything is very, is not cheap. And it's very tight, so that's kind of important to have too on the product. Alright, we got the bracket. Now we can start working and getting it into the stand. All right, so we got it in the upright position. You're supposed to put the bandsaw like this with the bracket on the outside. So, we gotta, and I think we're supposed to move these out. So you get to see here's the bracket. Here's the holes we got to meet up, and then we are going to uh, use the bolts that they supplied here. So what we'll do, let's probably put, just slap this thing up a little bit. We'll get it started and then we'll adjust everything. All right, so that's loosely in there. Now we can make our adjustments here. I guess that's just, you can line it up so it's kind of straight up and down. We'll play with that later to get it more precise. Let's kind of squeeze it in there, I guess. So it's the next day. Last night we went and picked up a blade for our saw. So let's go ahead. I'll get that installed and I'll bring you back to finishing up the uh, installation of the uh, stand. All right, we got the blade set up. It's good to go. So let's give it a test uh, cut here just to make sure everything's running smoothly. And then 
then we've got we got variable speed here, so we're gonna turn it up all the way. Perfect. All right. So we're good to go on that part. So yesterday we just installed the bracket to the stand, but now the reason why there's a there's adjustment slots here and then back here, uh, these are to get it squared left and right. But here we need to move our uh, saw forward and backwards so that this is our saw uh, guide. It needs to be all the way up, which it is now, but before it was a little bit too far. So that's how you make your determination of where your saw needs to be uh, by sliding it all the way up as far as you can until so it doesn't hit the stand right here. So right now it's it's pretty close. If you do that, then you'll get your maximum cut distance uh, right here. So we're gonna check it. We're gonna tighten everything down. So the next thing we want to do, they've got this piston here. We just need to connect that. And I did not read the instructions on where it goes. I guess it just goes in there. I don't really see a place for it, so yep, I think you just slide your air piston there, and that helps. So you get a nice smooth action while it's cutting. And then when you don't need it, you can put it down. You have a chain on this side to lock it down. So then it, uh, so you can carry it and it doesn't flop around. Now the final piece we need to add is the trigger. So right now, the only way to, to turn on the saw is by pulling the trigger here. But in your bracket packet, came this trigger bar and this will install that so you bring the bracket install it up up underneath here and stick it on this side where the switch is but before we do that uh, we need to decide where depending on where this is set where you need to put your screw and for our purpose I think we need to be in the very farthest one back so it just comes with a little screw here and we'll just lightly screw it in and we'll do a test. There you go. So that's like, we'll tighten it up in a minute. But then if you come around to the other side. So this is how the on off switch works. So here's our bracket we just installed. So what you do is you push the stand switch down, move your bracket forward. And by doing that, it's pushing your trigger switch in. So it would be on now. And when you're done, you just push the uh, switch down and it let and it releases. That's pretty simple. That's pretty pretty nice feature, I think, on that. And you know what? Let's see. go back here. Going back here, looking at it, now I see where this goes. So there's a hole, so where that piston goes, it doesn't go up underneath here, I see it now. There's a hole on on the end here, and there's a, a ball right there. So we just need to get it up, and get the ball in there. Pull, pull the release down, kind of like a, a compre the compressor fitting. Pull it down. Now let's see here. It's not going down far enough. Let's see here. It's not going down far enough. Let's try that again. There you go. And then let it go. And now it's locked in. So that's pro that makes more sense. That, uh, That's a lot more secure than the way we had it before. I think we've got everything set up. Nothing is calibrated, so I don't know how it's gonna cut uh, because I don't know how square it is, but let's just give it a cut and see how well uh, it cuts as is. So as I'm turning on the switch, it's not putting enough pressure on 
the stand switch is not putting enough pressure here because it's too low. So I wonder if we put the this bracket on the top side, it might uh, trigger the switch better because the, the switch is activated more at the top of the button rather than at the bottom. So let's, uh, we're going to fix that. Now, that doesn't work because the screw, the threads of this are on the bottom here. So, um, let's see here. So it has to be underneath. Let me, let me look at this for a little bit and kind of figure out what's going on. Okay, so for our switch issue, I have it on the, the stand bracket on the very last screw, but it is hitting the switch at the very bottom, but you need, the switch for this machine is up top. So, um, see it's on right now, it's on the on position. That's the off position. So that's one flaw in this. I'm not sure if it's something I'm doing not right. I'm gonna have to investigate more. I can't lower it down anymore because once where the saw is, I can't lower it anymore because if it, it will hit the stand. So it's at the right place. It's just it's just that this uh, piece right here needs to hit up higher for some reason so we're gonna have to pro we're gonna probably have to modify that and fix it uh so unfortunately it's not gonna work completely out of the box but i'm not giving up on it because it's still a very solid solidly well made item we're gonna try and uh modify it for right now so we can test it just to do our first cut so just to test it i got it the switch zip tied not a perfect solution but it's good enough right now I'm going to cut it a PV, piece of PVC just to test it. I don't have any metal right now because I'm not in the shop. So the first cut, it worked really well. I can tell just by looking at it with the eyeball. I don't have even a T-square with me. I really have very minimal tools with me that... Uh, it is not cutting uh, perfectly square to the piece, to the stand, um, one side's higher than the other. That's not a fault of the stand, that's just setting it up and getting it calibrated. So that's something we're going to have to do when we get back into the shop. Uh, other than that, it's very strong, it doesn't wobble. Uh, I'm very happy with uh, the quality of the build. I am a little disappointed about the switch. It doesn't work on their own Bauer saw, so maybe, I don't know if I've installed it wrong, or if it really is a flaw in the uh, construction of it, but that's something we can always modify. We can fix that. That's an easy problem. The more of my concern was, is this strong enough? Is this made of cheap metal that it's going to move? Um, and I don't think so. So let's set it up in the uh, bandsaw stand st style and uh, take a look at that. All right, so now that we've got it set up, now we're on the back of the tailgate. I wouldn't use it just as is. You need to mount this to whatever bench you're using. Um, either it's, they, I would screw it in to be the most secure, but realistically, if we were mobile, uh, I would try to clamp it to make it a, a better secure uh, way to attach it, but using clamps, um, but s screwing it down to your work surface would be probably the best way. Now, to this is the plate that they give you, so you got to have your work area. So let's take a look and see what. So this is a big, thick metal plate, very solid. It's very nice. So what we need to do is to uh, we've got to unscrew the blade guard. So it's just two little screws here. And then we add, slide our plate on, and then it gives us two, uh, a slot to put the screws back into to hold this down. All right, so just make sure that your blade is not hitting the plate here. I can see it's a little off, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, square. 
Just make sure it's tight like that. And then our plate's secure on there, so that's your work surface right there. So, unless you're using some guides basing off the plate, it wouldn't work, but um, it is a nice, flat, strong surface to cut off of. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. Here's our We've got our PVC pipe, let's give it a cut. So that was my quick review of the uh, setting up of the stand. And my overall reaction to it is uh, I'm very pleased with it. It's very strong construction. Uh, fitting the brackets are very nicely made for each uh, of the type of bandsaw, depending on which one you're going to install in here. Now. Uh, this is a mobile unit, so uh, I like it because it can do two functions. One, it can be a horizontal cutting saw, or two, it can be a vertical cutting, which is, which is great, uh, especially for a small shop or a mobile shop. If you're going to be having uh, to do this daily, then I would, and you're in a big commercial warehouse, then you're going to have the square footage, uh, floor footage to have an uh, independent horizontal saw and a vertical bandsaw so this might not be perfect for that but for majority of us who do small projects to medium-sized projects uh, or don't use it every day but need it to for our metal working projects this is great the only drawback is I don't know why the switch isn't working so especially being a Bauer product and a Harbor Freight this should all be tested and work perfectly maybe it's something I did wrong but that's not a, a negative that I would not buy the product because we can always, we, we have the tools to modify it to make it work. The one last thing I would say is so once you get it in there, it will take some time to calibrate it to make sure that the uh, blade is cut square. So really not more for this because you're going to be more freehanding it, um, but more for when you're doing the horizontal cuts like we did before. You're going to want to make sure that it is uh, both... Uh, side to side and uh, tilting that it is it, everything is calibrated square so that's going to take a little bit of time but I don't think that's a negative that's just anything where you're mounting a uh, the main machine to a, a bracket it's going to take some calibration because this is made universal so it's made for multiple uh, saws you're not going to have uh, it perfect fit for every saw so uh, maybe we'll get into a video doing that but overall this is a, they hit it out of the park for a hundred dollars. Uh, this is a great mobile stand. So I'd give it, give it a try uh, for your shop. Here's one bonus tip. Not only do you have the adjustments here on the back for the saw, the stand actually has some calibration uh, too. If you want to do the tilt function, uh, you've got three bolts on the back and that's what you're going to use to calibrate the stand. Uh, so you have the, the tilting of the blade like this that's where you're going to need to go. If you just need it uh, the other way, you have the other calibration uh, on the back, so uh, which is going to be like, like that. So just a quick tip. Good luck on your project, and I hope you like the stand, and I think I'm going to like this in the future. For And we've got a few projects coming up, so I can't wait to use it. And if you'd like to see more videos like the one that you just saw, you can check here and here. And remember the ABCs of making. Always be creating. Till next time.